today we're going to be discussing the seven secrets to gospel chops. That's right. I believe that there are seven key ingredients, key elements that everyone who wants to play gospel chops and actually sound authentic, everyone should know these seven secrets. So we're going to jump right in. Again, I'd like to welcome you, especially if you are a beginner to intermediate church drummer. This is the channel where I present resources, lessons, and even on our website, we have courses that you can take, that you can dive into to really help you become skillful and, and effective in music ministry. So today's lesson, we're gonna focus on those seven ingredients or those seven elements uh, that are critical for really sounding authentic while we're playing gospel chops. But I also wanna encourage you to pick up the free download right there in the description, free PDF download, five steps for building gospel chops. Five steps. Now the five steps are, are basically giving you the progression. It's telling you step one, do this. Step two, do that. Today's lesson, however, are telling you the key ingredients that need to be present in your drum fields, in your drum chops. So the first one I wanted to discuss is simply the importance of the pickup note. And in gospel chops, typically it's gonna be a pickup note with the kick drum the kick drum coming first in your fields, okay? So even in the intro section, what I played there, if you really get down to it, it starts with the kick drum and then it goes into the field. And that is super, super common with gospel chops. Okay, number two, the next secret, the next critical ingredient is being able to subdivide the beat using six tuplets or groups of six notes. Subdivisions is very important in developing gospel chops, but specifically being able to play six tuplets or as some people would like to refer to them as 16th note triplets. But of course you don't just play the 16th note triplets straight you add in accents as well. So here are some examples of how you can play just six tuplets and start to develop them with accents so that you can develop those gospel chops. Now, one of the key ingredients along with developing the six tuplets or again, 16th note triplets is not to just play them straight. Like I said, not to just play them hand to hand. I'm gonna demonstrate some stuff with the snare, just the snare, but then adding the kick drum underneath because this is where you can start to play around with accents and you may see drummers do this all the time. They're playing long, long phrases. You're wondering how they doing it. They're just subdividing. They're just subdividing and adding in accents and even supporting those accents with the kick drum underneath. Now, that brings us to number three. And the third important ingredient, the third secret is to use the kick drum in your fields, to do kick fields. Not only did we talk about starting the field with the kick drum, but actually when you orchestrate your notes around the kit, not just staying with the snare, not just staying with the toms, but to break that up with the kick drum in between. This is also super common 
and gospel chops. Number four is being able to apply rudiments to the drum set in a very creative way. Again, this not only goes for building gospel chops, but being able to apply rudiments is how you build chops, period. It doesn't matter what type of drumming you're doing, whether it's marching band, drum set, uh, jazz drumming, gospel drumming, whatever type of drumming you're doing, the foundation is rudiments but not just playing them, you know, just on the snare, but being able to actually apply them to the entire drum set. And so if you have been following this channel, a lot of the drum feels that I've presented have basically started off as a rudiment where I flipped it around in some kind of way and gave, gave a, a different twist. And that's because I believe that's really the place where a beginner should start. They should start learning their rudiments and then apply them to the drum set. Now, when we talk about gospel chops, there are some rudiments that are better suited for gospel chops than others. Some of them are just easier to apply. So I'll name a few. Six stroke roll, paradiddle diddle, the double paradiddle, five stroke roll, four stroke roll, and the Rattamacue. So for demonstration purposes, I won't go through all of those rudiments, but let's just look at how we could apply the six stroke roll and the paradiddle diddle. Number five, the fifth key ingredient and the fifth uh, important element is phrasing. Gospel chops, phrasing. And what I mean by that is every style of music has a certain phrasing. Um, I spent quite a bit of time playing jazz, and I, by jazz I mean straight ahead jazz, traditional jazz. That has a certain phrasing, even though you might be using triplets and six tuplets just like gospel music, the phrasing is a little bit different, okay? And when you are applying your concepts, whether it's subdivisions, whether it's taking a rudiment, um, and you want to apply that to the drum set, keep in mind that in order for it to have that authentic gospel sound, you have to develop that gospel phrasing. And typically it is a swung feel. It is a like based on swing triplets. Similar to jazz, also based on swing triplets, but it's a little bit different in gospel. So let's just look at the six stroke roll, right? You could play the six stroke roll straight, or typically you're gonna hear the six stroke roll in gospel with a little bit more of a swing feel. All right, number six is linear patterns. Again, number six is linear patterns. Linear patterns are a critical ingredient and a more advanced step when you are developing gospel chops. So linear drumming simply means that you don't have any two limbs hitting at the same time. It means that your limbs are playing one after the other. So right, left, left, right, kick, left, right, right, left, kick. Those would all be 
examples of linear patterns as opposed to playing both hands at once or a hand and a foot at the same time. And there are a lot of linear patterns, you know. Um, it definitely deserves a separate video to dig into all of them. But let's just talk about a few common ones to get you started. One common pattern is right, left, right, left, kick, kick. Notice this is a six tuplet pattern. It's a group of six notes, four in the hands, two in the kick. Right, left, right, left, kick, kick. Another common pattern is a three note pattern, but of course you can repeat it and end up with a six note pattern, but it's simply kick, right, left. Kick, right, left. And then if you wanna make it a six note pattern, you just repeat it, kick, right, left, kick, right, left. Another linear pattern that is also super common is kick, kick, right, left, kick, kick. And there are many more linear patterns to learn, discover, create your own, but understand that this is one of the key ingredients to building gospel chops. If you made it this far into the video, I trust that you have already hit that like button. If not, now is the time to smash the like button to let YouTube know that you're getting a lot of value out of this video. If you haven't already done so, also hit the subscribe button and click the bell so that you can get notifications for more great content coming from Next Level Drums. You don't want to miss a thing. So we're moving right into the last ingredient, the seventh ingredient, which I personally believe is the most important. Because while it is critical to develop all of the skills, you know, to physically be able to play your instrument well, to know your subdivisions, to know your time signatures, to know how to move around the kit and be fluid, all of that's important. All of that's essential. But what is most important, if you really want to develop that authentic gospel sound, it is the anointing. The anointing. Now, for some people watching the channel, that may be a new concept. I'm gonna try my best to explain it. But for those that have been in church, grown up in church, you know what I'm talking about. There is a difference between listening to someone who's talented versus someone who's gifted, versus someone who is anointed. And when we are serving in music ministry, we want to seek the anointing of God. We want to be anointed to play our instrument and anointed to do whatever it is that we're doing in service of God. Learning gospel chops is not something that you can just kind of pick up and go uh, and, and, and do without really having that high quality relationship with the Lord. Because when we are playing gospel music, when we are serving in music ministry, it, it really is a ministry. It really is a service. We're giving honor to God with our gifts, but we are also serving that church community, that faith community. And we are trying to draw people closer to God. So how can we draw people closer to God if we are far off from God? It's not just about our skills. It is also about our relationship with the Lord that gives us the anointing. And that's something that we can pray for. That's something that we can seek. We can spend more time with him in order to develop. Um, but it's not something that just happens um, without any intentional effort. So you can't forget about your relationship with the Lord. So I hope this has been an encouragement for you, uh, especially if you made it to this point into the video, to not only work on your skill sets, but also work on the relationship with the Lord. 
God will take the little bit that you have and multiply it and bless it in ways beyond what you can imagine. So if you haven't already done so, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification, and smash the like button. And I wanna encourage you to check out the next video as we dive deeper into the concept of how do you build chops. And let me just say it this way, there are levels to this. There are levels to building chops.